In a recent video that I'll link to up in the top corner there, I showed you how to find which breaker controls pretty much any outlet or light in your house. And once you have that information, you don't want to lose it for your next electrical project. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to document your breaker panel using Google Slides. It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY and documenting your breaker panel gives you a quick reference sheet to hang by that breaker panel so you always know you're turning off the correct breaker before doing any electrical project. And by doing it in Google Slides, it makes it very easy to update as you discover more and more about the electrical system in your home. Before I show you how to do this in Google Slides, the first thing you need to do is to take a photo of the breaker panel in your home. Just do it on your phone and save it in Google Drive, Google Photos, on your computer, wherever. Once you've got the photo saved, open up a new file in Google Slides. I'm going to jump over to my computer so you can see how I do this. Now just know I am using Google Slides in a browser on a Windows computer. And I'm working on a Windows computer because while you can create a new Google Slides file in the app on your phone or your tablet, those versions don't have all the features that I think you need when creating this type of documentation. So let's go over to Google Slides on my computer and see how this is done. So here we are in our new Google Slides file. The first thing I'm going to do is to change the name of the file so I remember what this is. So this is breaker panel diagram, let's call it that. And the first thing to do is to change the sl slide size or the paper size. Now, it's set up to be a slide, as, as you would expect, but we want to change it to be a piece of paper. Now, that's going to be vertical if you have a vertical uh, breaker panel, and it's going to be horizontal if you have a horizontal breaker panel. So um, let's close this themes. We don't need that. The black and white is all we need. So I'm going to go to uh, under the file, and let me... Uh, zoom in so you can uh, see this a little better here on the screen. So I'm going to go to this page setup and it's going to give me a dialog box and what we're going to do is we're going to change it from widescreen to custom and we're going to put in the number of inches width and height. So width is first as you can see here so if I'm going to, I have a vertical panel so I'm going to use an eight and a half by eleven standard letter paper so my width is going to be seven and a half so I can have a little bit of margin on each side and my width is going to be 10.5 and say apply okay so now it has changed it to my vertical uh, piece of paper there and I'm going to change the layout so it doesn't have the, the title stuff so I'm going to go to the layout here and I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says blank and now I have a clean white sheet of paper this is where we're going to start so now we are going to insert the image that we've saved from the photo that we took of our breaker panel. So I'm going to go to my insert and I'm going to go to image. And I just want you to see what uh, the options are here on the, the screen. So we've got upload from the computer, um, from your Google Drive, your Google Photos. Uh, those are the ones that are most common. So I'm going to upload from my computer here because that's where I've saved it. And here's my breaker panel here. So I'll click on that, say open, and it inserts the photo onto my page. So the first thing I need to do is to crop it so that I just see the breakers because that's really all we need here is we don't need everything else. So once I have selected the photo here on my ribbon, I'm going to click on my crop image tool. Now I can adjust the sides of the image. So I'll bring it each of the sides in until I have just the breakers, which is what I need it to be. So you just eat, you can adjust it from the corners or from each side. I usually tend to do it from the side. Once I'm done cropping, click on the crop tool. Now I can make it uh, larger. You do want to leave space on each side because that's where you're going to be putting the, the documenting of what it is. And I'm going to move it so that I see the crosshairs in red which means I've now moved it to the center of the page. This makes it easy to put everything around it. So now I've got my image on my page. Now I can start adding my text and my arrows to indicate, well, what does each breaker actually control? 
So let's go ahead, go ahead and add an arrow. So I'll click away from that. And I will use my drop down tool here. And again, let me zoom in so you can see this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, so this is the line tool, and I'm just gonna select my arrow, which is the one that I want. And now I'm gonna draw the arrow from the tail to the head. So it's always good to draw it from the tail end to the head, because that's the way the arrow is going to go. So I'll do as an example, this first breaker here. I've added my arrow, now I need to format it. So I'm gonna, first of all, change the color. And the color picker is here, the line color. So I'm gonna drop that down and I'm going to pick this bright yellow. So now when I click away, you can see the bright yellow, but it's really thin and you can't really see it, see it very well. So let's change that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to change it so that the line weight is four pixels. That may, oh, that's better. But again, you're gonna lose the yellow on the white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place essentially some shading around the arrow so you can see it wherever it is, no matter what the background color is. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the format options and I'm going to use a drop shadow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the drop shadow. I'm gonna leave the color as black, but I'm gonna set the opacity to 100%, so it's more solid. My angle is gonna be 360 degrees, 359. And then the radius I'm gonna to set to six. So you can see that it goes to six there, six or seven, whichever kind of works best. So I'll close that. And now when I click away from that arrow, you'll notice how it has kind of a little black kind of a glow around it. That's making it easy to see whether it's on the breaker panel or off the breaker panel on the white surrounding. So now I've got my arrow, I'm going to go ahead and add a text box. So my text box is here in my ribbon and I'll just draw that on the screen. And the font here is gonna to be too big because you're gonna to have to fit quite a bunch of text around this breaker panel. So I'm going to reduce that font down to 11. And this, let's say it's going to be living room lights, dining uh, room light. Okay, now I can move my text box so it's close to that arrow. I can also adjust the end point of that arrow by uh, moving it around. And if you see a purple dot, it means it's connected it to uh, one of the spots on that text box. So now I have my arrow and my text for my first breaker. So now all I need to do is to copy the arrow and the text box for the other breaker. So I'm gonna select my arrow here. I'm going to say Control C because I'm on a Windows machine. And I'm gonna click in another area and I'm gonna say Control V. And you notice I now have another of those arrows. So I'm going to move it over. Oh, control Z, control Z. If you grab the wrong thing, this is so easy to do. So I'm going to move it and let's uh, do these green breakers here. Now you'll notice that the arrow is pointing in the wrong direction, but again, we can just adjust the end points of the arrow to adjust that. I'll move that in and move that in here. And now I can take my text box and again, Control C to copy the text box, Control V to paste it, grab my text box, move it over. And uh, this is a double breaker, so maybe this is uh, the kitchen stove. So I'll highlight that, kitchen stove. And now, uh, oh, it's a little further away than I want, so I will just grab that, move it down so that it is close to the arrow. Now you can see how we can document every single breaker as we identify them, we can put the text, put the arrow pointing to the breaker, and now we have, when we get it all done, a map of all the breakers in our panel and exactly what they control. Two last things to uh, maybe add or think about. One is if you find this a little small to work with, what you can do is you can use this zoom tool here on the ribbon and you can zoom in or zoom out as needed. And then you can scroll up or down in the, I'm just using the mouse wheel here, to move up or down in our page and be able to see it a little closer if you're not sure if the arrow's pointing to the correct breaker or you wanna edit the text, it's not large enough for you, you can do that. You can always use that uh, to go back to the fit 
which fits the page to the space that you have on your screen, on your monitor. The only other thing that I would suggest you consider doing is to adding a text box at the very bottom of the page that indicates when did you last update this diagram? Because my experience is this is regularly updated as you discover new things about the house that you live in. So I'll add another text box here and I'll put it down at the bottom. And this I'm gonna make uh, even smaller text. So I'm gonna make this uh, nine point and I can say uh, last updated colon and let's say April 24, 2023, when we're making this particular video and move it down to the lower corner there. So now I can always update that and know when's the last time I updated this so that is it current? Is it the most recent one when we're working with it? Now, once you have completed your breaker panel diagram, how do we use it? Well, there's a, a number of different ways you can you can use this. So the first is saving it as a PDF. Now, saving it as a PDF is a good idea because then you can use that PDF in other applications. Like if you're using Trello or you have a Google Drive that you store all the information about your home on, a PDF is a great way to do it. We're just going to go to the file and we're going to go to download and we're going to go to PDF. And it will go ahead and, and create that download. So I'm gonna open this file and it opens in the browser. And one of the things to notice here is, is it saved the whole page, so it's got everything. And the nice thing about the PDF is that when you want to zoom in on it, notice how crystal clear that text is. It's always going to be very high resolution, very easy to see. And that's a real advantage when you are having something that you're accessing, let's say maybe it's on your phone or on your tablet and you have to zoom in to see, you wanna make sure that it's always going to be crystal clear. So that's one option. And again, whether you use Trello, whether you use some other application to keep the documentation about your home, that's a great way to use it as a PDF. Another thing you can do is you can do, again, in the download, you can choose this one here, JPEG. Now it says only the current slide, but we only have one slide anyway, so that's okay. So I'm gonna click on JPEG and what it will do again is it will open or it will create that image and I'm gonna open that so we can take a look at it. And let me bring it on the screen here so we can see it. Now, one thing to notice with JPEG is it saves it at what I would consider to be not a high resolution. When I go ahead and start zooming in here on this image, what I want you to notice is look at how fuzzy that part of the text is. And even the image is quite fuzzy. That's because it only has a certain number of dots and it doesn't have enough dots to make it clear when you start zooming in. So while a JPEG could be included in, uh, again, any other application, so Trello, Google Photos, you could save it on Google Photos if you wanted to, this is not gonna be a high resolution photo. You may wanna consider some other option as opposed to just the JPEG. And of course, one of the things you can do is you can say file and then you can say print down here at the bottom. You can print this if you have a printer, you can print it onto a page and then put it up beside your breaker panel or somewhere in that area. So you always have that reference that you can look at when you're at the breaker panel, simply look at it. And that's exactly what I have. I have that exact setup for our breaker panel where I have our documentation right at the panel, easy to access. As you discover more about each circuit and identify new outlets or lights that are connected to that circuit, it's easy to update the file in Google Slides. Then either print a new copy if you're posting it by your breaker panel or update it digitally where you store your documentation. You can do the updates in the Google Slides app on your phone or tablet because you can copy and paste and edit the text. Don't forget to update that last updated date on the document. Documenting your breaker panel will make you more confident that you are shutting off the correct breaker when tackling electrical projects in your home. If you found this video valuable, please click the like button so other DIYers who are tackling electrical projects in their home can find this video. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified of new videos when I publish them. Thanks again for watching.